It's the 20th century, and generative AI is the new gold rush. Microsoft, under its chief executive officer Satya Nadella, has invested over 10 billion United States dollars into the AI race. Google has poured in billions more, building massive data centers and scaling its AI models at record speed. And Mark Zuckerberg is burning billions of dollars to poach the best AI minds on Earth and supercharge his LEMA models. The world's biggest tech companies are in an arms race for the future, but one name is missing from the front lines, Apple. The company company that wants to find innovation, that built the iPod in 2001, the iPhone in 2007, and an ecosystem so addictive it became a religion, is now leaning on outsiders to power its most hyped AI features. The Apple Intelligence launch in June 2024 was supposed to be a comeback. Instead, the flagship AI Siri never ships. Internal teams were fighting like rival startups, and even their own engineers admitted the keynote demo was mostly smoke and mirrors. While rivals flood the market with AI-first products, Copilot baked into Windows, Gemini running offline voice assistants, smart glasses translating conversations in real time, Apple is stuck outsourcing core capabilities to OpenAI. Investors are furious. Regulators in Europe are circling. Welcome to Grey BTC. Like and subscribe. It helps with the algorithm and helps me tell more stories like this. I love Apple. In fact, I've even visited their billion dollar headquarters in Cupertino, California, and I own multiple Apple products. So I say this with real disappointment, I never expected Apple to stumble this badly in the AI arms race. Watch this video to the very end, because I'm going to reveal exactly why this is happening, and whether Apple is at risk of losing its dominance entirely. Because in the future, the one who controls AI will almost certainly control the world. To truly understand how far Apple has fallen behind in the AI arms race, you have to remember that they were once seen as pioneers. Back in 2011, they introduced Siri, an AI assistant that, at the time, felt revolutionary. It could set reminders, send messages, and answer questions with just your voice. Siri quickly became a household name, the kind of product that made you feel like the future had arrived early. But it also had flaws. Flaws that Apple, despite having over 15 years to refine it, never truly fixed. And that's shameful for a company valued at $3 trillion. So how did Apple, the same company that has dominated tech for over a decade, fail so badly with AI? The answer isn't simple, but one of the biggest reasons lies in the strategy that once made them unstoppable, waiting. For years, Apple perfected the art of letting others rush to market, then swooping in to release a better, more polished version at a premium price. They didn't invent the MP3 player, the smartphone or the tablet, they reinvented them. Tim Cook has not only kept Apple alive, he has made it one of the most valuable companies in the United States. Under his leadership, Apple's market value rose above 1 trillion United States dollars for the first time in its history and continued climbing until it reached over 3 trillion United States dollars. That dominance only slipped briefly in the year 2024, when Nvidia, the artificial intelligence chip giant, overtook Apple in market value. Cook achieved this by reshaping the business model Steve Jobs left behind. While Jobs was focused on building one iPhone at a time and making sure each new release brought noticeable innovation, Cook learned that Apple could release multiple versions of the same product with only minor adjustments and still generate massive revenue. This approach worked in part because Cook expanded Apple's services business. Platforms such as iCloud, Apple Music, the App Store, and subscription bundles like Apple One now make up a significant share of revenue. In the third quarter of fiscal year 2025, Apple's services division brought in 27.4 billion United States dollars. However, the strategy has also led to criticism. Many of Apple's devices now lack features like micro SD card slots, forcing customers who want more storage to either buy a more expensive model or pay for extra iCloud space. Competitors like Google's Android partners and other smartphone brands often include expandable storage, giving users more flexibility at lower cost. When Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone in 2007, it was a single world-changing device that redefined the phone industry. Each subsequent release under Jobs brought visible leaps in design and functionality. Today, Apple is often accused of selling near-identical phones year after year with only slight modifications. While the iPhone still generates enormous revenue, more than 200 billion United States dollars in 2023, accounting for over half of Apple's total 383 billion United States dollars in revenue, its growth has slowed. Steve Jobs built transformative products that changed the world. Under Tim Cook, Apple has built an empire of incremental upgrades, higher price tags, and a business model increasingly dependent on locking users into its services. 
In today's tech world, if you want to stay relevant, you need to own a piece of artificial intelligence. You either ship products built on it, or you create a service so innovative that it forces the rest of the industry to catch up. Apple knew this, and in June 2024, at their Worldwide Developers Conference, they announced what was supposed to be their big play, Apple Intelligence. It was pitched as a personal, privacy-first AI system woven deep into the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, generative writing tools and mail and notes, smart photo cleanup and photos, Genmoji, that could create emojis on the fly, visual intelligence to recognize objects in real time, and most importantly, a completely reimagined Siri, capable of recalling months of context, pulling data from across your apps, and even handing off questions to ChatGPT, all while keeping your information private. On paper, it looked like Apple was back in the race. In reality, most of it wasn't ready. The Siri they promised never arrived in 2024. Many of the available now features shown on stage didn't actually exist outside of controlled demos. Developers were stuck that the selling point of Apple's newest products wasn't what they could do today, it was what they might be able to do in some vague future. And when the truth set in, investor confidence cracked. Apple's stock dropped sharply, as Craig Federighi admitted that the full Siri overhaul wouldn't ship until 2026. Then came the lawsuits. Consumer groups accused Apple of false advertising, pointing to the WWDC keynote as evidence that they knowingly marketed incomplete features as if they were real. Critics said it wasn't just a stumble, it was proof Apple had lost its edge in AI. And here's where things got even more unusual. Instead of fixing it in-house, Apple turned to OpenAI, yes, the makers of ChatGPT, to power parts of Apple intelligence. That's a company partially owned by Microsoft, one of Apple's biggest competitors, and already partnered with Google on AI research. For a brand that has built its reputation on tight control and doing everything itself, this was a public admission. Their internal AI teams had failed to deliver. Meanwhile, the competition was sprinting ahead. Google rolled out new versions of Gemini and its video generation model Veo3. OpenAI kept making ChatGPT smarter and faster. Meta released improved versions of LLMA, and Apple? They were left trying to catch up to a race they once should have been leading. Apple's AI problems didn't end with Apple intelligence flopping, now they're facing fire from Elon Musk himself. Musk claims Apple is stacking the deck in favor of OpenAI's ChatGPT while burying his own AI, Grok, built by his company XAI. He says Apple is giving ChatGPT prime real estate in the App Store's must-have sections, while Grok, even when it hits high download numbers mysteriously slips down the rankings. And this isn't just a throwaway tweet. Musk and Sam Altman went head to head in a heated public fight on X, trading jabs over whether Apple is quietly tilting the playing field. And if this sounds familiar, it's because Apple has been here before. Remember the epic games war? They dragged Apple into court over that infamous 30% App Store cut, calling it nothing less than a monopoly. Apple eventually backed down, sort of. A United States judge later ruled Apple had willfully violated court orders over the case. And now Musk is accusing them of doing the same in AI, actively partnering with OpenAI, a company partly owned by Microsoft, and systematically making Grok less visible. Musk has the money, the lawyers, and the platform to push this fight all the way into a courtroom. But that's not all. Look at the Vision Pro, Apple's so-called next big thing. It costs as much as a small used car and delivers a maximum of two hours of battery life. You have to carry a chunky battery pack with you just to keep it running. I tried it, and like many users, I felt sick after wearing it for too long. Not exactly the kind of revolutionary experience Apple likes to brag about. And let's not forget the Apple Car project. Years of work, billions of dollars burned, and in the end, quietly cancelled before a single model rolled out. So, is this the final straw for Apple? The AI race is moving faster than anything we've seen in tech history. Their main rivals, Google, OpenAI, Meta, are shipping new AI products at breakneck speed. Meanwhile, Apple is fighting lawsuits, delaying flagship features, and leaning on partnerships that would have been unthinkable under Steve Jobs. I'm not rooting for Apple to vanish. A healthy Apple means healthy competition. But right now, they're not just falling behind. They're in danger of losing the narrative entirely. What do you think? Is this Apple's BlackBerry moment? Or is there still time for a comeback? Let me know in the comments. I'm reading them all.